good morning to day 10 of the Lofoten crossing. <laughs> I just took a bus from Rheine to uh, behind me Svorwegen because that's where the hike up to Munken or Munkebu starts. I couldn't find a, a connection from Moskenes so I decided to take the bus here. Uh, the plan for today is to hike to the camping spot where I was supposed to camp yesterday or last night but I couldn't make it there because I missed that 3 p.m. ferry <laughs> and then the 6 p.m. ferry I took didn't stop at that uh, ferry stop anymore it went straight to Rheine that's why I spent the night in Rheine now and now I try to somehow uh, improvise and find a good ending for the Lofoten crossing but whatever I do uh, I missed one day yesterday definitely so and I already spent my flex day in Legnes I don't have any more days left I only have today and tomorrow so I will have to cancel or skip the day 11 of the Lofoten crossing uh, and instead tomorrow uh, my day 11 will be the Lofoten crossing day 10 so I will hike all the way pretty much kind of the same way back again but then I will walk to O or, or A so the southernmost point of the Lofoten crossing and then for my understanding and for my happiness I did my personal Lofoten crossing improvised a little bit because of weather situation and missed ferries but if I make it to all tomorrow I can say I did it okay where do we go Munkabu so about like that If I go directly to that wild camping spot that I have in mind uh, it will be around 8, 8 ish kilometers today which is fine because it's already 11 a.m. but it will be more than 700 meters of elevation up 700 up, 200 down, something like that because yeah, obviously we are here at sea level and have to go all the way up to the mountains weather forecast looks good rain has stopped this morning so rained in the whole night happy that I always find a way to avoid the rain camping <laughs> so forecast looks good, it's good cloudy but should clear up a bit later tomorrow even better yeah enough talking I'm speed I hope you enjoy today's video there's one tent over there or the bike so, uh, I read somewhere that people here are not so happy about uh, the wild campus around the lake because for the locals this lake is like a picnic spot on the weekends or any other day to hang out here with the kids and then yeah they complain that 
like these wild campers, they poop everywhere and leave rubbish everywhere. Yeah, things like that. I don't know, I don't like... I would not camp uh, when it's so close to the houses. Of course, it's more than 150 meters, it's just across the lake, but uh, I don't know, for me it belongs to the to the village here, I would not camp here. I see a, see a second tent, also green, Ooh, from the direction. Yeah. I also have photos of this place where it was just covered with, with tents. Yeah. I don't know what you think about it. Should go hand in hand with the, with the locals. If you do wild camping, you should not bother anyone. If it's so close here and families want to use it on the weekend, then maybe move on. Yeah, <laughs> shoe situation there hasn't improved. Well, a little bit. I had them inside my room uh, last night, but still not dry. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's a problem with these Gore-Tex shoes, what, what people report, yeah. They're good until they get wet from the inside. So don't let water in them, because then Gore-Tex shoes take a very long time to dry. Yeah, I agree with that. So, it's not 100% dry. I can already feel my feet are kind of cold because of the... Oh, sun comes out. Are kind of cold. So, yeah, maybe it dries now with the sunny weather. Uh, fingers crossed. Okay, first little climb, first viewpoint down to the lake where we started. I will put the name down there. Yeah, ah, clearing up, nice. Nice easy trail here the moment. I think we were going to hike all along those electricity cables if I saw it correctly on the map. That's fine. That's fine. I expect this hike to be way more busy because the hike to Munkebu, to that hut in Munken, the mountain, is one of the highlights here. So I'm prepared to meet other people. I already saw a couple of other hikers, but two overtook me with light luggage. But, yeah, so far it doesn't look too busy, but that's only because for the day hike I'm kind of late, late, you know, started at 11. And usually you would start in the morning, right? Because you will, you need maybe double the time for the return hike. But this I just walk up and stay there. I can start whenever I want. <laughs> yeah, one hour in, one hour, and already first stop. <laughs> yeah, the viewpoint. Today I do as many breaks as I want because yesterday was quite stressful. I don't know if it will come out as that in the video, but I was in that constant rush of having to catch that ferry. Very difficult terrain, up and down, slippery, very rocky. It drained all the energy out of me and I was always checking the time, checking the time. And then I reached uh, that highest point, beautiful, beautiful view. 
could have had a little drone flight because it was not in the national park yet. But I had no time. I looked down there at the, the ferry station and thought, okay, two more hours. Let's run. Uh, looking back now, it was not, not the best idea. Or maybe it was, because at least I made it to the second ferry. But I had to wait for more than one hour for that second ferry. Uh, so I had, looking back now, I had one hour more time that I could have at least spent 15 minutes there at the summit or at that highest point, enjoy the view. But I was just racing. Uh, so good to know for if you ever do that hike yeah that section is very difficult it took me very long so get closer to the starting point here not even self fjord hütter get even more more close and start early because yeah that's a, another lesson learned on this the fourteen crossing you cannot really predict how a day turns out. Will it be difficult or easy? Sometimes it says oh, just 10 kilometers and 400 meters of elevation but then it's the hardest hike ever or the other way around you go you have to go up 900 meters 20 kilometers but then it's kind of all right the hike and yeah, it's good. Yeah, so never underestimate the short hikes I would say don't underestimate any of these days here. It's, it, there's nothing easy so far. <coughs> well, maybe that section of Danusjord when I was walking along the, the road for 10 or something kilometers, that was easy. Uh, but other than that, this, these mountains here, hiking in Norway, it's a different thing. It's not like in the Alps. It's, this, it's the most difficult I've done so far, most difficult trails are well, not the touristy ones the touristy ones are prepared very well but others very rough very rough especially then with the big monster backpack <laughs> maybe with the light bag it would feel completely different probably yeah. okay I am speed and I will have my where is it corny muesli bar now yeah. Hmm. No added sugars. Oh, that sucks. I need sugar. <laughs> okay. However, Connie, if you want to sponsor me, get in touch. Bit more rocky here, the path now. But all very grippy. No, it's nothing slippery. Here we even have a chain. Okay. This is actually steep. Will be fun on the way down when I come back. Definitely need the chain here. And on top it's slippery for the rock is not so grippy anymore because too many people walked it. Eh? Fun, fun, fun. <laughs> Steep section. Definitely needs needs the cables there or the chain. Whew. Okay, up, up we go here. Do, 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 do. It's not even the highest point. It's just like halfway. We have to climb up to 490-ish meters now and we're on 
220. No. <laughs> a little bit of a climb. So far, no big problem. Good path. No more chains here so far. Quite easy. Yeah, the knee pain is back since half an hour or something. Uh, also last night, even was sleeping in a normal bed, the right leg was popping and everything from the knee below the whole leg. So they take a painkiller, put on like Voltaren inflammation anti-inflammation cream definitely needs a longer rest it's just too much weight too much up and down Whew. and another break <laughs> uh, bridge there at the horizon Point here. Oop. 498 meters plus minus. Just what my watch shows. Ooh, what am I finding? We are Munkebu, Munkebu hat. So, if you want to stay in the hut. You need to book it and you need a key. Well, there are people in there, so you don't need a key, but you definitely uh, need a booking in order to stay overnight there. I'm sure you can go inside and have a hot drink or I don't know, or maybe not. I didn't even try because I think it's for the people who booked it. So, anyway, uh, just in front of uh, the hut is where path leads off and goes kind of down and will eventually lead over there and I'm going to check that out because that's actually part of the Lofoten crossing so normally in a normal way if you do it from north to south you would come from that direction to Munkebu so let's check it out bit windy but I try to show you so normally I think there would be a ferry uh, station down there and then you would come up there and it's and come over this ridge uh, <laughs> over the ridge and then down there again yeah let's see how the path looks like Okay, came down there now to the lowest point of this travers, so you might call it. Now we have to go up there and then somewhere there. <laughs> yeah, you have already, already see a couple of camp spots, just have to make sure you're out of the wind. Uh, up there at the hut. Camping is not allowed, 
in a normal 150 meter radius. There are signs also no camping, so you have to walk a little bit along, uh, away from it. But it's also in the other direction from where I came from towards the hut. There were many spots. I actually saw one tent. I'm, I'm not sure if it's on the footage. I saw one tent. I didn't like the spot. It was very windy there. I, I wonder if the person set it up there when there was no wind. Now it was very windy. Already on the way up again. Behind me. The hut I came from. Yeah. And have to make it somewhere there. Boop, boop. Oh, I'm a bit exhausted. I don't know why. I was going very slow, but now I feel it. I think it's just the overall exhaustion after all these days. Now the most rocky and steep passage here, very narrow. <laughs> Definitely having respect of it. Have to be careful, focused, focused. I am speed. Okay. Huh. Okay, just documenting it. Uh, yeah, very rocky passage, you know, but at least it's dry before the rock was wet and slippery, with some mud on top, so that's not good. Here, it's, that's good. I think we're almost there. There, around the corner. There's the hut. survived it. <laughs> now we're up here. The ridge that we have only seen from a different from a distance so far. Down there is Rheinefjorden. Okay. Now I just have to find water and a sheltered spot because windy here, very cold wind, arctic wind. <laughs> oh. Okay, changed the setup a little bit. It's really cold wind here. Uh, just met two women. They told me that uh, across, whoops, sorry, across that hill there, it would be less windy. So let's check it out. Would make sense because the wind's coming from that direction and so behind that hill should be some shelter. Yeah. Yes, the water. Okay. It seems it's a wall blocking most of the water from the lake. But some water goes through. I've seen then on that side. Uh, we can see it from the from the hut. There's a waterfall. So, uh, let's go to the other side and then I think from there I can go down and fill up the water bottles. Climb here, 100 meters. Yeah, every climb is a big climb with a big back. Every okay, we start. Every climb is a big climb with the big backpack. Oh. oh, I need a break and I need to eat, but we're almost at the top.
made it to the highest spot here. 550 meters, if my watch is correct. And this is the path, yeah, that comes up from the ferry station on the other side. So this is normally where you come up, yeah, if you do the Lofoten crossing in my, my direction. Or it's where you have to go down if you do it in the opposite direction. So, let's check out the view here. So somewhere down there would be the boat stop or ferry station and then yesterday the boat uh, was there around the corner yeah this here in the front is also a ferry station I put the name all the names down there in the description I cannot remember there's actually the ferry boat I don't know maybe oh it's well at least it's a boat <laughs> Okay, so far there's no one else here. Let's set up the tent in a wind sheltered spot before we have 20 people coming up. Not well, don't mind. Right, welcome to Casa Mazzi this night with the glorious view last night of my Lofoten crossing at I don't know, 420 meters. It's not even at all, <laughs> but I don't mind. It's just one night, and we have the view down to the Rhine Fjord. And Dinner time, dinner with the view, and of course, last minute, the spoon broke, 
I fixed it with some sticky tape. So we'll be then creamy salmon with pasta and glue. <laughs> okay, let's try that creamy salmon with pasta. It's ready. Better than the beef stew. <laughs> Not very intense, the flavor, but it's definitely fishy. But I still think the, the codfish one was the, the best so far. The codfish one that I had uh, just before arriving at Nussfjord. It was delicious. Okay, I have my dinner now. Enjoy the view. And then oh, have a long evening. <laughs> it is, let me check. Oops, so cack, cack. Where's the watch? It's not even eight. So it's a bit chilly here. So I'll put on two jackets, a uh, beanie, and I hope it stays like this. It doesn't get too much, but I can, yeah, I still have a good sleeping bag. I'm, I'm positive that I will not be frozen here tomorrow morning. <laughs> All right, let's eat. Mm, good. All right, tent camera. <laughs> It is 9 p.m. and I'm already in the tent. I ate my dinner outside and enjoyed the view for quite some time. Uh, yeah, but it gets a bit cold just sitting there doing nothing. So I went to my tent and to the sleeping bag and now it's cozy here and I'm super tired. <laughs> So I guess I call it a day and better sleep now and get up early tomorrow. Uh, maybe have a bit of a clearer view tomorrow, less clouds, that would be cool. But it's already, already amazing, more than I could ask for. Uh, yeah, what a day. Made it to... Made it to the to the camp spot, which should have been the end of day nine, and I made it here on my day ten. So it's a bit improvised. Mm, maybe I have to draw you a map somewhere to 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 explain it better what I did. But I guess if you've watched all the videos, then you you know what happened yesterday and that I yeah because of the mist ferry and the bad weather and everything I had to go to Rheine and then from Rheine there was no other way to get here anymore and I really wanted to come here and, and pick up from the path where I should have um, yeah, should have stopped yesterday. So it feels like that now I'm really continuing the Lofoten crossing. Yeah? yeah, because I came all the way up here and tomorrow I will walk all the way down into Or or to R, R E Lofoten. And that for me technically is a crossing of the Lofoten. In my world. <laughs> oh but don't don't take it from me. It was hard, very hard. Also today's hike was quite hard. So there was, there were some dodgy spots again. Um, mainly because it was slippery. Yeah, the, the rocks were wet and dirty and muddy and then the steep passage, passages where I really had to kind of climb again 
um, yeah, became more difficult just because of the the, the, the slippery rocks. So let's see how it is tomorrow. Um, because the passages I mean were all uphill today, kind of climbing. So let's see how it is tomorrow when I have to go downhill these passages. Sometimes it's downhill is complete. Well, not just sometimes downhill is completely different. It can be that downhill is much more complicated. It can also be that downhill is much easier. What I for sure will do tomorrow is um, put away the sticks because they they were, were just in, in the way uh, of these passages. Okay, a little bit of wind picked up again. The <laughs> tent is shaking, but it should survive stronger winds. I put all the storm lines uh, secured it very good, so I'm sure it will survive some, some good wind. Yeah. All right, enough blah blah. I will have a good night's sleep now, fingers crossed. My leg hurts a bit, took a painkiller again. So, anyway, thanks that you thanks for watching this video and thanks for yeah. Thanks for everything. <laughs> and I hope you tune in again to tomorrow, my day 11, which will then be the last day and the final of this Lofoten crossing. All right, good night. I am Speed and see you tomorrow. I'm nervous, maybe a little bit scared. I just hope that yeah, being scared increases your senses, your reflexes, makes you focused. I will, once I'm there, or even already there at the boulders, I will put sticks away. I will put the GoPro away. I need hands-free. I don't want too much stuff hanging around from me just to make me feel more safe. Yeah, because it's all just... If I put the GoPro here, normally it's hanging here from the strap. It's just always in my way yeah i'm speed we do this together